Hey there, everyone. How are you? So one of you was telling me that you were having painter's block. So if you have experienced painter's block, I just want to encourage you and um, show you guys how to get out of it. So the last video that I added to my floral class was this one. I'm really excited that uh, I was able to get that class off the ground. And we added a bunch of really cool flowers and stuff just so you know. So if you want to take the floral class with me and you're feeling really inspired by florals and upcoming spring, definitely come on into that class. It's at JacquelineJacks.com. Just look for the watercolor classes. So do this exercise for writer's block. All you have to do, or not writer's block, painter's block or artist block, whatever you call it, is get some, it can be cheap watercolor paper. I like to use watercolor paper because if I don't use watercolor paper, I just feel like I've just made a huge mess, right? Take whatever is on your current uh, desk, our desk, whatever paints are out, we're just going to use them, spray them all down here and get them all nice and juicy, reactivate the paint. And this is a great thing to do with just excess paint that you have around even you know so the idea behind this is we're going to do like 10 different flowers in a very very short period of time I'm not going to tell you 10 flowers in 10 minutes because it's a minute per flower you can do it I have done it before I'm not even going to try and get you to do you know like uh, 10 flowers in 20 minutes we're just going to try and bang out 10 flowers and not get really crazy detailed about it. We're going to try and do stuff that's fun outside the box. And it's just about just making bad paintings, really. If you come out with anything great, then awesome. But this is really just to get that artist block cured and just get you painting. And I usually find that my best work happens after I do exercises like this. So you can do these kind of exercises with all kinds of stuff too, whether it be um, like quick landscapes. But because I've been doing a lot of florals for this floral class, I just thought I would do florals with you because you guys are seriously uh, hanging in, hanging in there with me on the florals. So this is a black pen and what I'm going to do here is just widget in some really pretty like little poppies very, very loosely. And this is just just for fun, we're gonna take a poppy color. So probably Quinn Rose, and I'm gonna add a little water here and just kind of splash it on. It's so funny. It's amazing how really cheap watercolor paper, this is Fabriano and they're gonna hate me because it's really literally a bad watercolor paper. You can tell, right? You have to really just kind of work at it. So this is just taking a flat brush and I'm just kind of going over those nice little details and bam, probably just give it a little bit of zhuzh. And I want a little bit of green. So let's take some green from over here. And I'm just gonna see what happens if I just throw caution to the wind and take my pretty little green brush here and just go crazy. Nice. I actually pretty, I actually kind of like this. This would be really fun for um, just a card. You know what I mean? All right, let's do another one. So how is everybody? I hope you're doing well because there have been so many questions lately, so many things that everybody wants to know. So if you have questions, don't forget to leave them in the comment section below and let me know what you're struggling with. Of course, the group page is a great place because I have like 10,000 people in my group and it's growing like 50 every single day. And you guys are, a lot of them are taking the classes and coming over from my classes, but a lot of people are also just coming over from Facebook. And I think it's, uh, it's kind of cool because you can get advice from me in there and you can also get advice from other students or other watercolorists that 
I've asked to join the group, you know, in advisory. I have a lot of people looking at the art in that group. So this is just a nice little green, um, kind of like leafy situation. Now, what can we mix with green so that we don't throw off the green because it's not dry yet? Well, blue, of course. So I'm going to take a little bit of indigo and I'm just going to spot that there. And maybe some of this cobalt turquoise. Oof, that's beautiful. And we're just going to give that a little bit. So pretty. Yeah, I love this. Make the flowers just a bit bigger. I like this one. Very, very pretty. I like it. Maybe, maybe we'll even, if I had real watercolor paper, I would probably do something um, a little bit more crazy with the background, but it's just going to sit on this paper. This paper is just absolutely crazy bad. But there we go. I got two of them. Well, actually, I could count these as like six, right? Because there's like a lot of flowers there. <laughs> Put this aside. All right, let's grab some yellow, shall we? I have some yellow here that I want to do something with. And let's just squish it around. This is just a great way to play. It's so much fun cleaning out my palette getting rid of some of these colors so that I can just really clean this out. Of course, not this one, but this little one over here needs cleaning. So I'm taking several different kinds of, uh, several different kinds of yellows. I like that. That's pretty. And maybe I even go down here with a little bit of this orange. You know, I find sometimes that I really do uh, on occasion come out with some really good flowers this way that I, I ended up, I end up using in my course. So cool. Let's do that. And then in the center, I'm trying to think of what color I want in the center. Maybe I think something that might look cool with this, a little bit of Mayan. Cause this has a really neat effect to it now because it's not dry of course I can't do much more with that but I can give it a stem that's fun I like that it's really pretty just simple and smoosh some crazy leaves there's another one you know when you when you want to try and get your style together I think it's really important to do exercises like these I find that maybe not beginners as much but people who start to get past the beginner stage they start to ask questions about like I need to find my style or how come I can't sell my paintings? And I think a lot of times it's, it's really just a matter of you're just not there yet, right? Like collectors of art, what they look for um, from painters, like to invest in a, a new painter. And this isn't just like, you know, buying somebody's cards or stickers, but an actual collector of art looks for artists that are doing things that are have a unique voice and they're doing them in a different way so like maybe something they have never seen before or that usually really speaks to them for some reason and I find that the paintings that I do that uh, tend to get the most um, excited energy you know around them I find that those are a lot of times um ones that are perhaps have a really unique voice uh, a lot of my portraits get that or some of my really really kind of abstract type of uh, florals get that and I think ultimately it's because 
they have something very, very loose and unique and, and it allows the person to see uh, something that they're thinking about inside of them, you know, and they kind of stem from projects like this. You know what I mean? They really do. So when you're, you know, stressing out and you're having writer's block, just remember that it takes like, you know, thousands of paintings and, and so many mistakes and crazy, crazy trial and errors before you really like do kind of get to a point where um, you find your style and you find out what works and what doesn't work and what you like. I'm going to run out of space for these. But all the while, I'm going to do some smaller ones, I think. All the while, you're you're working it out. You know, you're getting there. You're just working it out. I know one of the things that I've always uh, learned and been taught in art schools and things is that you can only copy to a point and then... At some point, you're going to stop copying and start getting your own voice within that uh, that technique that you've learned once it becomes like kind of a automatic thing, you know? And when that happens, it's kind of a really good place to be. And you just, you really do know that it's there. Some people get to it really quickly, you know, some people don't, some people take a long, long time before they get there. And, uh, all the while you're just doing exercises like these and you're learning from other people like me or whoever else, you know, you decide to take lessons from and while you're doing that, it's kind of like an evolution, isn't it? an evolution of you and but you know as long as you're having fun you're doing it right you will get there you really will so a lot of times I've I think my point is that I've experienced art block because I've been like just kind of fed up with the way I was painting for a little while and I just really needed to do something different and unique you know and so therefore I just kind of got to that point where I was ready to try something else and that's something else I wasn't sure what that was and so therefore I just kind of like uh, stopped stopped painting so much but at some point you do need to get back in there you know best way to find yourself is to lose yourself so get that side of your brain working that uh, has that beautiful artistic vibe and doesn't analyze everything and get some painting done, some quick painting. That one's pretty. Let's do a simple uh, little blue stem here. I haven't done these in a long time. Something just easy. Let's take a little bit of that and a little bit of the blue. This is a great little brush. Pretty colors. <laughs> Goofy. Let's take some of this lavender. What is this? This is manganese violet. And I'm going to just swish this around. You know, when you really get fed up with yourself in your artwork, and you, you'll get to a point, not, maybe not in the very, very beginning. In the very beginning, you're, you're just enjoying painting and watching this marvelous uh one kind of paint just you know spread around and just do so many fun things that it's really hard not to just have a great time but when that kind of fades and you start to you know struggle with certain things that you really want to perfect and and they don't quite work out and, 
and uh, you start to get fed up with yourself, which you will. Everybody reaches that point. So don't worry. I'm preparing you now. That's when you can do these exercises. That's another reason why we get blocked as artists. I just got so many cool ideas actually. And you know, this is a good way to try out different color combinations too. Like just grab colors out of your palette. Um, like I'm kind of pulling some greens and some blues here just to, just to see, and I'm playing with some different uh, shapes and different brushes. I'm going to actually get another brush so I can try. Let's get this one. Ooh, got to get this brush out of the water. My water is getting plenty dirty over here. How are we doing? We're not doing too, too badly. Actually, we've got a lot of different, a lot of different stuff going on. Um, so let's get some of this blue. And hmm, going to just wet my brush a little bit. Let's go around. I don't know if I chose the right brush for this one. Maybe. And there it's working. It's the, it's, it's actually, you know what it is? It's the paper. This paper's rotten. <laughs> this is, but I use this for these crazy exercises because I know I'm not going to sell the painting. I'm not going to do anything with them. <laughs> those are kind of cool. I like those. What are we going to do for our, um, let's take this brush and get a little bit of my green here. <laughs> it's cool. I like the way this um, combined together. That was actually a really good idea and something I would do again moving forward, you know? Like even if you take uh, this and just put a couple dots then take a clean brush and work them out into a circle and then just kind of zhuzh it a little bit here give it some lines now i'm starting to you know kind of love how pretty that is isn't that beautiful it's really pretty. I can even bring a little bit of the blue in. Encourage it. Get a little more of the purple in there and just kind of encourage it to to just be a lovely ink blot. <laughs> but like on a really good piece of paper and um you know, just kind of bringing this idea forward. This is kind of a really cool idea and then then you could have like uh, some beautiful chiseled kind of wisps. I like that idea. I think this is kind of pretty. And I like the color combination too. It's really beautiful. You know, that's really pretty. All right, let's flip our paper. Just that over there. Um, trying to think of what, what else can we do? How about, hmm, how about one of those ones that we did before with a little bit of the blue and we just kind of start it with some spots and then just kind of bring it out it doesn't really matter what brush you have for this give it a little more color And I kind of like orchids a little bit. You know what I mean? It's pretty. Yeah, I like that. They're kind of like these little crazy, crazy weird little orchids. Look at how this just 
just sits on the top of the paper. The water just doesn't go anywhere. It just sits there. <laughs> it's just terrible. <laughs> All right. I'm not going to complain about the paper because I chose to do it on this crappy paper. Like really dramatic. It's actually really pretty. I love monochromatic things. They're so beautiful. Okay, that's beautiful. See, I'm getting better, right? Getting better as the time goes on. How about we do a, um, a little transparent one. We'll just take some blue and Take some blue and just do something kind of, I literally don't even know if this is going to, it's kind of semi-transparent, it's not really a transparent one. I'll have to go back to it though. Because if I go over it, I'm just gonna fill some areas. That, and I'll go back one if that dries, if that ever dries. <laughs> it might not dry. Okay. Goofy, kind of fun. We could do a yellow. Scribble Rose. Have you ever done one of those? Just like that. Then grab a little bit of the green. And Scribble Rose. <laughs> and then you just kind of, you can evolve it any way you want to. I try to not overpaint these because if you overpaint them, um, but that's really pretty. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. What else haven't we done that I need to do right now? I don't even know. Um, just kind of like basic. Where's this? We'll get this and let's get a little bit of blue. And I'm gonna do just some easy little kind of like V heart shapes. And just to fill this in to give a really basic structure. You can really just do this with any brush. Give it a little color. Then grab a another color. Just pop some different variations in there. They can even touch. It's not even crazy. It's a cute little vase. Just something quick and different and easy like a smoosh. <laughs> um, let's do one. Well, I have room for a couple more. Let's see. What about, what about if we grab some of our yellow? Oh, it's totally not going to work on this paper, but maybe it will. Usually if I set this brush down, the paper, like I work on Arches paper and when I work on Arches paper, this works out great. This is just a classic example of how your paper can really screw up a painting because this is just like, I can't very much do anything with it, you know, but I got something. Um, well, so take a little bit of pink and put it in the centers. Not really a whole lot I can do with this because the paper just won't let me, it's just sitting right on the surface, but that's okay. 
like a little green. Some crazy little paddles. I'm afraid to get a little bit wild with it because it's just going to leech, literally, because everything is so just sitting right on the surface. It's amazing, the sizing on this paper. I don't know why people like say they use it and love it because it just, it drives me crazy every time. So I actually cut it into a bunch of these sheets so that I could just use it up. You know what I mean? Let's go back to our, uh, our pen. And I'm just going to give myself some shapes here. I love these little ink pens. They're so nice. Okay. So what are we going to do this one? We're going to grab some, let's see. I think I will grab a little bit of cobalt turquoise. And just give it a little bit of that. And a little bit of my pink. And just kind of touch around it which is going to make this lovely purple shade. Just so that I can kind of remind myself of this beautiful combination that I haven't done in a long time. It's really, really pretty. Isn't that pretty? I love that combination. It's really beautiful. Um, so this is kind of dry. So now we can go back and see if I can put in some little transparent layers. Not a ton. This is definitely not the paper that you want to be doing transparent layers on, but hey, it's another flower idea. And remember, we're talking about block here. We're talking about a blockage. So getting unblocked is the whole idea. All right, so how'd we do? How are you guys doing? Are you painting along with me? Or are you just watching me go crazy <laughs> and paint all these crazy things? Um, I think in this little area, maybe it's going to start with... Just some crazy pretty leaves. I can't wait for spring to come again. I'm so excited because it literally is just such a beautiful time of year here. Every single day that I go out with the dogs, there is a different flower waiting for me to take its picture. I actually have a whole Google file of these flowers. Um, from my walks with the dogs and I end up painting a ton of them, you know, and actually in my uh, watercolor class for beginners, you guys have access to the entire file. You can see everything on my walks that I see. And I try to take, I, you know, when you're an artist and you paint, you end up taking pictures that are perfect for artists to paint from. You just do. You, your perspective is a little bit different and you have you ever looked endlessly for good paintings or good photography that you can paint and I find that my eye in my photographs is arranged so that I can paint those it really is it really comes out that way and that's the funny part of it all right guys so I think I am done let's take a look at what we got this is definitely a good way remember for us to get rid of that writer that um artist block so we started here with just a little pen and some watercolor really pretty just loose 
Oh, it's pretty good. Then the second one I did was here. This turned out really nice. I like this one. I like that kind of arrangement. But again, I'm not like picking or choosing these for any reason whatsoever. You know, they're just to just to get you out of your head and get that brain going and just play with your colors. I like the texture on these. I think these were would be really pretty on a great piece of paper. This is probably one of my favorite ones so far. And that's just me. I don't know if you agree with me. Hands up if you do. I, I do like this um, loose rose. I think those sketchy roses are really fun to do. And I do like these, but I tend to kind of gravitate to the really obscure stuff. And the more obscure, the better. You know what I mean? If you look at even what I just recently did um, for the watercolor class, I really, really love how this turned out. I think this is really neat. Um, other things that you guys might want to go back and look at. I think we did this one on the channel. And this was a really fun project for you to learn to do because it's got many layers and it just kind of plays with watercolor and texture. So definitely go and check those out. And if you are going to do this exercise, then come over to my group page on Facebook. I'll link it below and share whatever you came out with because I think it would be really, really fun to um, see what you guys did because this is a lot of beautiful really really beautiful uh you know different variations of watercolors and things that you can do things you can learn to do i can't even believe like there's actually some stuff in here that i would really like to i don't know maybe develop over time there's a lot i think there's a lot of goodies all right have a good one happy painting hope this helped bye guys